This is a big early 80s, anywhere between 80 and 84 Pearl Export. Two 22 inch bass drums in cases. It's got a 16, an 18, a 14, a 12, and there's a 13 or something in the other one. That's without the snare. With the snare, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With the snare, it's going to be an eight piece kit. And it came with all these cases. There's um, hardware in here like stands and pedals and all kinds of stuff. And these are actually Anvil, not Anvil. What do you call these? Are these Anvil? Yeah, these are actually made by Anvil, these cases. All for 250 bucks. In killer condition because of the cases. This drum set's like perfect. So this is an old Pearl Export. It's gonna be the two bass drum, snare drum. It's gonna be three of these, one, two, three. And then four, five. So this is gonna be a huge, sorry, I'm out of breath from moving at all. It's gonna be a huge eight piece Pearl Export in black. And the reason why it's in such good shape came with all these hard cases. This drum set's been stored in these cases which is awesome. So I'm going to try and sell mine in the cases to make it worth more. But this is going to take a while because I'm going to need a couple of extra little things to get it the way it should be. I'm so out of breath from carrying everything room to room. I mostly wanted this because in the picture I saw this 18 inch Tom that's in here. That's worth like 300 plus just the drum that's in there. These cases, all of them together, are also worth more than $300. So that's 600 bucks if I was to sell that stuff. That's what they're worth right now. I got all of it, everything, for 250 bucks. And these are two 22 by 16s. I just got that not too long ago. It's a 14 by eight. This is gonna be a 12. That's either 12, 13, or 13, 14. Then there's a 14 that goes here, and then a 16, and an 18. You cannot find 18 inch floor toms. I mean, they still sell them and make them, but use, they, they, people want too much money. So if I sell mine, I need to recoup this money. I have to sell mine. I can't keep it. I'm gonna sell that B8. I have a ride in there that's a B8. And I have an extra hi-hat stand and pedals. So I can sell mine as a complete kit. It would just be like, you know, how I was playing it, just not as many cymbals. But this is going to take a while. I also don't have enough microphones to run this whole thing. And Jamie, the guy, said, <clears throat> sell mine with the cases and then put that money back into microphones. But we'll see. We'll see. I need to recoup this money first. But that was a good idea that he said, go get, you know, more mics for the the drums this was such a chore because I started completely from scratch. Like, I just took apart everything. I just rewired everything and got these. I got two of those, 35 American dollars each. I hope they actually work. If not, I'll figure out something else. I got a couple extra things in the closet. But I had to just start completely from scratch. Everything. I mean, this room was empty. And it came out pretty good, though. It's not bad, It's <laughs> it looks cool. But uh, yeah, I had to rewire everything, run all the wires, and I'm really particular about my cable management. Everything's plugged in, everything's mic'd up except for this guy. I'm gonna use a uh, auxiliary microphone for it, which I really don't wanna do. But these are a hundred bucks each and I can't seem to find one in that price range. But this is how it looks. It's too zoomed in. The phone doesn't have a good wide angle on it for video, but this is how it is for now. I just have to finish that little project right there, and I am done and ready to play this thing. And, oh yeah, I need to get a clamp for that. I'm not ready to buy one of those yet, so I'm just going to spin this around and do that. And the reason why I'm playing a secular song the, for my first song is it's going to use the entire drum set except for the cowbell. It's, I don't even know if it uses that though, or it's not going to use those, but it's going to use both of those, both of those, 
every single symbol will be hit at some point. So that's why I picked that song. Unless somebody knows of a good Christian metal song to play on this thing. I do want to play Yahweh by Striper. I'm not up to that level quite yet. I'm not ready. Andrew wants to play it at some point too. It's now my favorite Striper song. But if anybody else, I know you guys probably don't know Christian metal, but if anybody does happen to know of any that can use, you know, both bass drums and all the, all the pieces, let me know and I will play it for you. Now that I'm done with that, I now have to go through all this <laughs> and get the white one put together. How I'm going to sell it. It's going to be missing a couple small things. But it's going to have an extra black 16 inch floor tom. It's going to have two floor toms and it'll have all the pedals, a broken hi hat, a B8 ride, and a B8 crash. And then I'm also going to, I already have the bass drum in one of those. I have to take it out, but I'm going to sell at least half of these cases with it to get some room. I have nowhere to put them. And then once all this is gone, that goes over there. <laughs> Oh man, this has been a big project. Bigger, I mean, for most people it's probably easy, but these rooms up here are so tiny. It's it's hard to it's hard to do. And I had to move everything out of here, you know, and then put this drum set here, put the new one in there. It's been a lot of work. All right, so this is for my own benefit. Unless this actually works, then I will upload this for somebody else's benefit. So this is an Axis. This is the old school one. This is the, uh, I don't, I call this a Gen 1. I'm not sure what the, what it's really called. It's not as nice as the other Axis longboards. I mean, I love it. The direct drive is, uh, it's really awesome. It's very smooth. So what I'm going to try and do is I just got a double bass drum kit and I need two pedals. Now this has an extra hole for hammer, but I was like, okay, well, I thought I could just disconnect the spring and stick it on here and it does not look like it works that way and if it doesn't what I'm gonna do because I'm gonna try that first what I'm gonna do is take this piece off there's two Allen bolts right there this is one bracket this will stay here but then down here it looks like there's two squares and over here that's the inside square that's the outside square so what I was thinking was, worst case scenario, I can transfer to the other pedal this whole piece with this and its own little square because those those little bolts right there go all the way through. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know what I don't know yet until you take this apart. And if that's the way it works, then that will screw into here, and it'll look just like this, but on this side. It's almost as if I'm taking this pedal and making it look like this but I want this spring right here. And if you look at the way that they're made, that's exactly how it looks. They look identical. So I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna take the spring off first and see if it'll actually go on here, but this is round. So I don't know what this side looks like. If it's round, it'll work and I'll be done. If it doesn't work, then I'm transferring all that stuff because I know for sure that'll work. In fact, I just thought of a different idea because I'm kind of, oh, no, that's not going to work. Never mind. So just in case anybody does want to do that, I did. that's exactly what I did. I took the bracket off just because you don't need it. But uh, I simply took the spring that goes here and took it off of this bracket and stuck it on this pedal. And uh, technically, I guess you could move this brick and that thing over here and make this the right side pedal. They're identical. But that's all I had to do. I swapped the spring and now I have two single pedals. And I have, I mean, I have the arm. This is a full double pedal that I have. I have all the pieces, but now I know I can just use this as two pedals. And if I need to, I could put it back together as a double pedal. So I hope that helps somebody if that's something you want to do. I'm done. For now. <laughs> but it's ready to play. Everything's mic'd up. This was a chore. Starting from total scratch, emptying the room. You know, I thought I could put my cymbal stands back. It doesn't work that way. I did it. I redid everything. I redid all the microphones. I redid all the cables. And then finished setting all this up today. I did all the cables, with, like wrapping them and stuff. I've got this fake 57 for now. I need to get another one of those Sennheisers. But 
Then I had to get the software going and redo that because there's two extra drums than before. So I had to get that all routed and working out. And even though I played these the other day just to see what they sounded like, I am ready for at least a test tomorrow on the microphones and see what happens. I still don't have the right thing for this, but I'm just, I turned it around so it's just kind of out of the way. I'm just gonna play it right here just for now. And I'll see what happens. It looks cool, it really does look cool. Sorry, this phone, I can't zoom out. It's it, that's just, it's too far zoomed in. It doesn't, doesn't go anymore, but it looks really cool. I'm just completely buried and I love it. And then uh, I also have to figure out new camera angles for the videos. And my, uh, I had the foot pedal camera down there because it was a double pedal. It's actually mounted to the bottom of the snare. It's still down there. I need to get that out of the way because now that's useless. And I used to have that angle right here. That's going to change. I might, I might put one on this pole looking here. We'll see. I might put one here. I don't know. I don't know yet. I have an option of four camera angles. I mean, I could do more, but four is plenty. But three is usually what I use unless I use the foot cam, and then now I've got to figure all that out. Andrew also took the light because he went to college. That was his light for his desk that I was using. But I am ready for a full microphone test tomorrow. Oh, except for the stupid fan. I turned it on high while I've been working in here, and... Now, because it's all the stupid little the remote thing, I can't, I can't turn it down. It's going into the overheads right now. You can actually see a little bit of signal coming coming in there from the fan, which sucks. i got to figure out how to change the battery or something or turn that down before I record tomorrow. But either way, it's just a test. It's okay. I really wanted to practice drums today, and the air conditioner was broke. It's so hot up here. It's almost like being in an attic. It's really hot. So I'm going to play drums while wearing the... The ice vest, the old cooling vest. I feel so stupid, but it's like, hey, I want to play, and it's super hot. I just you can barely even breathe in here. It's so bad. But got to do what you got to do. I just want to have some fun. All right. So what I'm doing today is about two months after I think I posted another video about this issue. So all I'm really doing is documenting what I've been going through in case anybody else goes through the same thing. I switched from the five piece white pearl. Yeah, that white pearl was a, just a five piece. I was getting a killer sound out of it. Uh, it was set up really nice. I was really comfortable because I've been playing it that way for you know a few years now. You know, you just get used to it. And then I changed to this monster which was going to be an eight-piece kit, ended up turning out to be a seven-piece kit. So we got two 22-inch bass drums, a 14 by 8 snare, and then 13, 14, 16, 18. Now, these all had Remo pinstripes on the top, including that bass drum. This one has an EMAD 2 on it, so does this one now. This was the one that came out of the closet, that one came with it, they're different. Now, I don't have a light down here anymore. They're different. This this thing, this pad, is a lot thicker on this one, like lengthwise, not thickness, than this one. So they have just a slightly different sound on them. And let me sit here for a second show you how the cymbals came out. They're, uh, they're a little high, but it's really hard to position them. These toms were on a rack on the other drum set. Plus, it was a five-piece, so... You have all this extra room over here because here you, now you, there's a bass drum in the way. You can see how far away the, the cymbal stand is now. So these were actually moved over because they were on a tom stand. And then it ends up with a hole here. So you could put cymbals right here, some stands, and put the ride in the same place because that's mounted to the bass drum. And it was a little easier to position things. With the two bass drums here, it added problems, unless you have a rack. If you have a rack, it would solve some of these problems. One of my big problems right now is if I go to do a choke, my arm smacks the hi-hat, so I can't do it. Also, when I go to hit it with my left hand, I got to hit over here, which is fine, but I like to do a big sweeping looking thing for the camera, and I can't because my arm still hits the hi-hats. 
And the reason why is I usually have the hi-hats back a little bit, and I, I'm actually thinking about taking all of these symbols and scooting them all in this direction. I would really hate to do it because it's a big chore, but I need to be comfortable. One of the things I was waiting on one of the parts was this clamp right here. See this clamp? So when you have a double bass kit, you have two single pedals. You can't use your hi-hat stand because the pedals won't go here. And this particular stand is also, this hi-hat stand, this is made for a double bass pedal. It only has two legs, and then this is acts as the third leg. When you loosen this, you can swivel these legs independently of the foot pedal. That way, it's usually next to your double pedal, your slave pedal, and that way you can get the legs out of the way and position this how you want. Well, when you have the single pedal here, there's a drum in the way. You cannot get this there, so what you have to do is buy this clamp. I really want to make a video of how to put this clamp on here. It was a hassle. It was a big hassle doing this by myself because you have to have the legs folded up and then this is falling over and stuff and you're trying to figure out where exactly on the drum to put this and how to, to should it go up here, should it go down here. It was, this was, that took me at least an hour to figure that out. I, I know it sounds like I'm a noob and I'm stupid, but it did. So what you do is you get this clamp and you fold the legs up. Now this holds this here. Every, now I don't hear this on the recording, but when you, when you hit the bass drum, it hit the, that's because of the way I use these. It, it rattles, but that's okay. So this is where I'm at right now. As far as like setup goes, I have replaced all the pinstripes only on the tops with Evans EC2s. I know that one looks like it's upside down. I always put my heads facing the label, the badge on the side of the drum. Now I could have put it up there just for aesthetics, but that's actually where the badge of the Pearl export badge is. So I always just, it's just an OCD thing I do, I guess. Getting a really killer sound out of this. It took, I've been playing it with the pinstripes on it just to get them positioned and stuff. And then it took me another, it's been taking two months in the software to get this right. Because I repositioned those. I repositioned the room mic. Plus, it's a completely different kit. I'm still using a fake 57 over here. I've got another, E604 ordered for that, so I'll just swap them out. The EQ should be pretty similar. The bass drums, we had a sure, what is it, a 52 beta or whatever it's called. And if you remember some of the videos I did in the past, I had two microphones in the bass drum. A fake 57 to pick up the click and the 52 to pick up the boom. Well, I, I can't show these. I don't want to pull these out. I'll show a picture of what I ordered on the internet. I ordered because I'm, I'm really happy with the fake 57s. They're awesome. They're piles. Their the frequency respons response, response is great. I really enjoy them. So I was like, what cheap bass drum mics can I get? And then I positioned them. I started them out here in the middle. I put them out here in the back. I put them right at the hole. Right now, they are inside. Like inside. They're about halfway in the drum in the middle. So that's where those are and I'll show a picture of what those are. There's some cheapy things. And this is this has been two months figuring out where to put things, going through all the sounds because what I did in the software, I started from scratch. I emptied this room. I started from complete scratch with setting them up and you can still see the pinstripes on the bottoms. So I like a two-ply top and bottom. I don't like single-ply on the bottom. And it's working out pretty good because the white drum set had EC2s top and bottom. But I had to start all over with the software. I said, let me just start over. I'm not just going to readjust things. Let me start completely over. And I also had the computer over here. The computer was on this table. Now, this table, I have a cloth cover in it just for videos. When, I, when the videos come on, I put this back. That's where the XR18 is. And the only thing I don't like about me doing this is I don't have access to the volume knob down there, which goes up here behind my head to an extension for the headphones. There's where I can, this is where I put the in-ears. So it's coming from there into my head. But I had the computer sitting on top of this table. Just because it's nice and close, it makes sense. 
I had a tray table there and I had the mouse on the tray table. That's where I put my drink and all that other stuff, little accessories. In the videos, I make sure all this is empty so you can't see anything. And let me talk about the cords for a second. I'm very particular about my cables. I'm really picky about this. So all these cables for the drums, they run down here. This is what I did on the white kit too. They're all wrapped up right here. They all go down the side and then that way, and they all plug into the XR18. Everything's labeled. All these microphones are, have a label. We have a labeler on them. I mean, we have a labeler, so I put labels on them. So this drives me nuts. See the cables on the floor? So what I did was I have injuries. Leaning from here all the way to here, I was even using the mouse up here, Le but leaning over, because I have my left hand on the computer, my right hand on the mouse, I can't do that, it'll hurt. So I took the tray table away, and it doesn't really matter, the computer, it doesn't matter where the computer goes as long as it's connected to the XR18. You could put the computer in a whole other room, it doesn't matter. You can have that in a whole other room, it doesn't matter, as long as the microphones are plugged into it, right? So what I did was I bought this stand. This is really cool. It's got wheels on it. Let's see if I can see it. The lights are in the wrong spot. It's got wheels on it. It's a. It's technically a projector stand. You're supposed to put a projector on here. And what I've done is I put the laptop up there and I put the straps on there. And then I put the mouse on this thing. And after I sit down, I move it over here so I can see it. So when I'm just editing the audio, I'm just sitting in the chair and I move that over there closer and I could just chill right there. It's really nice. Got the MDR 7506s over there that I, I edit with and then, or mix with, I say edit because I'm a video editor. And then when I play, I put it over here so I can reach it better and I could see it and then I just kind of push it back. It's really nice having it on that stand. I was looking at all kinds of stuff. I wish I had a rack because you could put it on the rack, put it up. Because when I was sitting here, I'd rather have it on my right side. I really don't like it on my left side. It'd be cool to have it kind of up, like like tilted, like right here over the, over the floor tom. So I can kind of reach it with my right hand a lot easier. But it's working pretty good. Just trying to figure out all these problems. Having a whole extra bass drums, taking up a ton of real estate. All the stands are in completely different spaces. I haven't marked the floor yet. It's on my list of stuff to do. I need to make a weight. For, these are my homemade weights. These are little tiny lunch bags. And they have bottles of water in them. I could probably put sand in there. Uh, sand at Home Depot is like two bucks a bag and I could probably fill a bunch of bottles and stick them in there. And actually that's how I have my tent set up. I'll see if I can find that video on the internet. You know the pop-up tents when I go drifting or to an event, a car event, and I put the pop-up tent up, I took gallon water jugs, milk jugs, whatever you call them, and went to Home Depot, got a whole bag of, I guess it's a sandbox, sand, it's just sand, and I filled up four one-gallon jugs with the sand, and then I take a rope, I attach it to the frame of the tent, and I just run it down the leg right to the thing so the wind won't blow it away. Instead of using weights or hammering the stakes into the dirt, if you're not on dirt, people are always using weights or buckets of cement and I'm like, I'm not doing that. Just tie it right onto the jugs and it's good to go. I just wanted to show once I set up the tent, I have rope but tie it here to the to the top, to this top piece, not the bottom. And then I put sand. It's play sand it's like from Lowe's it's like two dollars for a whole bag and I have four of these and they just tie it to them on all four corners and that it holds the tent down so I might do that I might switch these to sand because there is water in there I kind of don't like that but I need to make another weight for this symbol stand because they're all up high now and angled that way and tilted down and it's to get them out of the way of the toms I would rather have these a little lower but I hit them with the sticks because I don't know how to play correctly. The longest part was redoing the audio because everything's different. I moved those, they're angled down. I was What I was trying to do with those and the room mic, the room mic was way down here. And what I was originally trying to do in the mix is make it to where the drums themselves are close mic'd and I wanted the cymbals to sound like they're in a big room but I didn't want the room mic to pick up the drums. I didn't want the overheads to pick up the drums. So, you know, you can set a gate 
on the cymbals do like a long release or whatever so that it rings out more but by positioning them different you you get the drums in the overheads the drums should be in the overheads it gives it a little bit fuller sound but i like the drums really tight like really tight i have tight gates on them so that they're not picking up anything except for the hit but then you'll notice it won't ring out so you could release it a little bit but what i've done is just turn the gate you know, looser. So a little bit of bleed does come in there, but you guys don't notice that when it's fully being played. It's been interesting. I did a little piece. I think I'm sticking it in this video of the double bass pedal. I took it apart and made two singles out of it. I'm using the hammers that came with this drum set because he, he, he had two hammers in the bag. And all I have to do now, this is a, what do you call this, hydraulic head. I, I'm it's, it's working out. I should probably change it. It's sounding, I got a really good sound out of this drum set right now. It's working out really well. I'm really digging it. It's really cool. I'm having a good time. I just need to figure out some of the smaller issues. Figuring out the hi-hat. I had to wait a month for the clamp because it was on back order. I didn't want a cheapy, cheapy one. If you do happen to get one of these clamps, the only issue I have with this particular clamp, this bar, and you'll see if you ever buy one, is a single like L. I highly recommend getting a more expensive one. I just, I, didn't, I don't have a lot of money. I didn't want to spend so much money. I bought heads. I bought another E604. E I bought this clamp. I've spent money on this. I really didn't want to because I don't have money. Get this bar in an S like this. It'll give you a lot more options for positioning. You know, or get a better name brand thing. This is a D drum. Get a better brand name or something like the Tama or something, and you can position this better. I had a lot of problems with this because it's just an L. It works though. I mean, it's it's good. But this is where it's at right now. It's going to be different. I might move the symbols. I'm going to have to because I can't choke this one. And I've been playing it every day, just figuring stuff out, working out the mix, and it's going pretty good. So. The channel that you're watching this on right now is my random personal channel. So I was about to say the next video you see is going to be a drum video. I can't say that. But the next drum video you guys see after this one is going to be an actual song. I've got a couple songs I've been practicing, trying to work out some kinks because I'm not that good, trying to figure out how do I fake those parts. And I don't mean fake them as like I'm not playing them. I'm really playing them. But how do I fake it as far as like... If I can't do double bass, da -da 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 -da. I'll just do the two and then the snare da -da 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 type thing because I'm, I'm cheesy. Just trying to figure that stuff out. And you're going to see two songs come off of this thing that I think are really cool. And I put a sample in the drum tubers WhatsApp. I don't think anybody listened to it because it just gets buried. People talk so much in there, things just get buried. But if you want to hear that sample, I put it in the the drum tubers WhatsApp. If you want to hear that sample, let me know. I'll send it to you. I thought about doing a contest of trying to figure out what song might I play on this thing first. What video might I release first? And I was thinking I should give a prize. I ain't got no money. And I was looking through the closet of all the stuff we have. I don't have anything to give away. I have one more ride left over that I might just give Andrew to sell because he needs money. when I do sell the white drum set, every that was my plan. <clears throat> Get this whole thing put together and set up the way that I want it. Everything in the closet that's extra, heads, um, we have some mallets in there, probably give those to Matt. I've got a couple extra drums in there, cymbals. I'm going to empty the closet. Whoever buys my white drum set is going to get everything. I'm just going to put it in there as a package. Bam. I'm going to have the hard cases that came with this for sale separate though. So I'm going to sell the cases separate and the white drum set separate. But whoever buys the white drum set, they're getting everything that's in that closet. It's a lot of, to me, it's just garbage, but I'm sure it's useful to some people. I mean, I got a couple snare heads I'm going to keep in there and that's it because I like to switch those out unless I get a trigger. If I get a trigger, those are gone. So that's where I'm at. Thanks for watching this long 
boring video, but I like to document what I'm doing because if somebody else does what I do, they're going to definitely need to know about the clamp. You know, and I've ran into so many small issues that I did not plan for. You know, I figured set it up, play it, put some, it, it, it didn't happen that way. Is it me being picky? Probably, probably. But it's working out really well. It's also because the room is so small. I think it's nine by 10. Can't remember if it's nine by 10 or 10 by 11. I can never remember that number. But it looks big on camera. That's deceiving it. That's what the black curtains are doing. It's black curtain. Sorry, it's a Megadeth reference. They, um, they make it deceiving. If you watch really old videos that I posted in the, I have a playlist of drum covers. You watch the really old ones, you'll see the blue paint. You can see, you're like, wow, that room looks small. It is small. It's really small. But we put the black curtains up specifically to do uh, drum cover videos with. It makes it look bigger because you really can't tell how big it is. It's just black. So it works out real well. So the next couple videos you guys should see out of the drums is a couple of actual drum covers. If anybody has any questions or you're running into any of these problems, it might just be me. Let me know and let me know in the comments. I'm really digging this. It looks really cool. It's really cool. It's going to be great for visuals on uh, drum covers. It's going to look really awesome. I still have to figure out where to put some cameras. I'm still going to use the angle I had here, somewhere in there. I need one back there somewhere. Oop, I trip on, see, I trip. The room's so small, I can't, I can't walk in here. I might stick one like here, I don't know, maybe here, and maybe try and get, the, I had an angle over here. I might try and get something like this, I don't know. We'll figure that out. That's not that important. I'm not at that stage yet. I might, in fact, I might actually do that tonight, set those up and figure that out. But right now I'm getting a killer sound out of it. It's taken two months to, I started from scratch, not just with the drums, but with the software, just erased everything, start from scratch. That's a big project, just that alone with the software. But I hope you guys like the next couple songs I'm playing. All right, see ya. Thanks for watching this video.